Welcome to Quality Improvement Plans and Quality Improvement Science, the basics. In this series, we will present a very quick look at QI science and how its basic methods can be used not only to help you to create your QIP, but also to help you make progress on your indicators. Welcome to the second in our video series of QIP and QI science. My name is Alice Strawn and I'm a Quality Improvement Specialist with Ontario Health, and I hope you enjoy this video. As mentioned, this is a video two of a three-part series, which also includes videos on how to identify your problem, and select indicators, and how to identify change ideas and process measures for the indicators you have chosen for your QIP. This video focuses on diagnostics and determining root cause in order to enable you to select indicators and process measures. Session three focuses on change ideas and PDSA. It is recommended that you watch these videos in order to get the maximum benefit, but they can also be viewed as standalone. Watching this video, you will understand basic QI diagnostic tools, know how to use these tools to gather data about the root causes of your problem, and understand the link between root cause and change ideas. No video on QI is complete without the model for improvement. What we are talking about today, diagnostics, enables you to collect data about your problem relative to your aim statement. This step of diagnosing your problem will then facilitate the understanding of how you will know that change is an improvement and inform what changes you can make, which is the refocus of the third video. Here's how the model for improvement maps to the quality improvement plan. As you can see, there is a perfect matchup between the three fundamental questions of the model for improvement and the elements of the QIP. What are we trying to accomplish? The focus of the first video is reflected in the QIP as established provincial system quality themes and dimensions. How will we know that change is an improvement? What we'll talk about today, standardized priority indicators with organizationally determined targets. And what change can we make that will result in improvement? Organizationally planned improvement initiatives with process measures, the focus of the third video. And here's what it looks like on the work plan. What are we trying to accomplish? Is the aim section in red. How will we know that change is an improvement? The measure section. What change can we make that will result in improvement? The green pain section. Let's look at root cause first. One of the great things about root cause is that it's messy and it can be done with very few materials. A few post-it notes, black pens and a whiteboard and some butcher paper. Root cause is also known as a fishbone due to its shape. Ishikawa diagram because Kairu Ishikawa is attributing with inventing this tool. Lately, I have heard this called the Fishikawa, which combines two of its names. This picture is a real life root cause done with frontline staff in an organization. Each yellow post-it note is a possible root cause focused on the problem of too many repeat transfers, which you see in the box on the right. In your QIP, you will be looking at what is contributing to your performance on a particular indicator so that you can then select what you will do in order to improve your change ideas and your process measures. Here it is in its bare bones. You can see that it is vital to have identified the problem before you do this root cause exercise so that you are asking people to focus on the problem, not symptoms, and to be thinking about causes, not pointing blame or thinking of answers. There are many ways you can categorize the spines to link similar ideas together. You might try getting all the ideas out and then group them on each spine, putting those that are similar together and then assigning a category name. What is important is that you get as much information out as you can and do not judge or think about whether or not things are within your control or whether or not they are feasible. Quantity is important at this point, not quality. The group that completes this exercise should be able to see themselves and what they have produced. It is possible to do this virtually by setting this up as a shared document. It is also possible to increase the group size providing you input by posting the fishbone in a common area for staff and or patients to leave some extra sticky so that they can also contribute. Again, involving frontline staff from all organizations involved in the process and patients, residents, clients, consumers, families is critical to get the real deal on root cause. If you feel like your root cause level is too high level, i.e. communications comes out as one of the causes, you can use the five whys to dig down into what that big bucket of communication really means. By asking why five times, you can dig down into the true root of the cause. So let's try it. So why is communication a problem? Because no one shares information. Why does no one share information? Because they don't know what to share. Why don't they know what to share? Because role clarity is a problem. Why is role clarity a problem? Because it has not been defined. 
Why has it not been defined? Because it is not clear who does what in this area and there's duplication in what people do. Now we have gone from a big bucket lack of communication as a cause to knowing that what this really means is that people don't communicate because they don't know what each other do and there's duplication happening. That suggests a very different QI project versus trying to address the big bucket called communication. I also wanted to give you a brief overview of how you can use a Pareto chart in your diagnostic process. Pareto is, uh, helps you to focus on your improvement efforts by applying the 80-20 rule, which we call the Pareto principle. And that principle is that 80% of the problems result from 20% of the causes, the vital few. Identifying root causes that make the greatest contribution to the problem can help you to focus your efforts in the area where you are going to get the most impact. To make it simple, this allows us to figure out how the vital few are having the greatest impact on your problem and where you might begin. Let's look at how to create one. You may remember from video one that I had identified a problem of always being late for work and I had created a problem statement which suggested that I could look at some different causes of why I was always late for work and then be able to look at some answers. So I decided in a good QI process to collect some data on why I was late for work and the collection of this data is vitally important to being able to create a Pareto chart. Remembering that Pareto looks at relative contribution of causes. So collecting occurrences that look at the overall contribution is important so that we can compare one against the other. So I collected my data in Excel and I put my causes in the first column and I put my occurrences in the second. And then you can choose the Pareto chart function under insert charts histogram Pareto in Excel and Excel will do the work for you. And here's what it will look like. Once you highlight that data in the Excel spreadsheet, this is the Pareto chart that will be created. You can then be able to look at it and see where is the greatest impact coming from. So you'll notice that the difference on a Pareto chart is that there is a right-hand vertical axis, which you may not be used to seeing. That right-hand vertical axis is looking at cumulative frequency. And what we're interested in is where does it hit that 80%? So I've drawn a red line on this Pareto chart so that you can see that everything to the left of the red line, alarm did not go off, slept in, making lunches, couldn't decide what to wear, traffic, and sidetracked, are contributing the most to my problem of being late for work. So that may be where I want to focus my initial QI efforts. It's not to suggest that I'm not going to do the things to the right of the red line, but those are going to have lesser impact. So I may want to think about prioritizing and perhaps attempting those, those QI projects, those attempt at change a little bit later on. Let's talk a little bit about process mapping. Process mapping is a way of understanding more about the steps in a system and where the potential opportunities for improvement are. Just like root cause, you need to involve those who touch and feel the process every day and those who have experienced the process every day. You know what it is supposed to look like, but they will tell you how it works when they are short staffed or when the lead is on holidays and a patient can share how it looks and feels from the consumer side. Remember that a process map is a diagnostic tool, not an ideal future state. It's looking at what is true today where are the pain points that can suggest opportunities for improvement? And that will help you to determine which indicators are most appropriate to your QIP. Process mapping is also very low tech and uses the same materials as root cause. Posting in a common space as shown above helps you to engage others in contributing to its design. The shapes do matter in process mapping. So ovals or circles are start and end points, squares are steps, and diamonds are decision points where there is a yes or a no. Arrows connect the steps and cylinders can, can, can represent data. Sometimes data is also shown as a parallelogram. As long as you all agree on it, that's good. On this particular process map, they decided to show their opportunities for improvement in pink. And so they were able to keep track of where they saw an opportunity to be able to improve. I can't say enough about how important process mapping is, but it truly, again, is the discussion that you have when you look at your process map and identify those opportunities for improvement that is most important. The keys to process mapping, again, have the right people there to process map. Agree on the scope to start with. What's your start point and what's your end point? Look at what usually happens. Don't go down the rabbit hole of one ofs or one time this occurred. 
Don't sugarcoat it. Map what is truly happening. Process mapping is about learning, and that means learning what is good and what is not so good. Include whatever detail is necessary to understand what is possible for improvement. So it can get really messy and that's okay. And be sure to validate the map by showing it to others who know or have experience with the process and who weren't there so you can see if it makes sense to them. Here's where you can go for some additional resources on diagnostics. On Quorum, you'll see that there is a page, Learn, Share and Collaborate to Improve Healthcare Quality in Ontario. And there are various subpages within that. There is a page on QI tools and resources. You just click on the QI tools and resources at the top. This will bring you to a place where there are lots of tools and templates and processes that will help you, particularly with this very important diagnostic stage of your QI project. And then there is a section on indicators and change ideas. Once you have a good idea of what your root cause is, what, what your diagnostics has shown you, you can then begin to select your indicators. And here's a place where you can go to look at indicators that are on the quality improvement plans and change ideas we have gathered from past quality improvement plans that organizations have attempted. Really great place to start, not to suggest that this is cookie cutter or plug and play, but it is great to go and look and see what others have done before you, before you begin to start to dig into your own work. You can also go to the QIP website and QIP Navigator to find more information specific to the QIP. There you'll find the guidance documents, the indicator technical specifications, the overview of the quality priorities for the current QIP year. And you can also always connect with a quality improvement specialist at Ontario Health at the email qip at hqontario.ca. We also will be providing some additional webinars to learn what's new in the QIPs, help sessions that are focused and interactive that look on key topics related to the QIPs. QI specialists will be available in drop-in sessions to answer specific questions you have and be able to offer you some advice on developing or implementing your QIP. And there will be more videos like this one on QI basics and tips and tricks to help you create and submit a QIP. We hope you've enjoyed this second video in our series, Quality Improvement Plans and QI Basics.